welcome my friend you ain't gonna really get no help on this show so turn it up let's turn it up <laughs> so anyways well and one thing i want to point out it seems like dr um dr v you know um it seems like every time there's an issue with someone of color on the show like she always sends dr ish to take care of business it seems like she don't want to be bothered when it comes to the color folks, when she has to break down their issues or they're having some type of, you know, um, emotional outbreak. But you know what? <laughs> That's That has been going on in the last couple of, you know, seasons. But we'll see if she switch it up, if she change it up. Let's see if she's going to dress appropriately like a doctor. No, sir. I don't really care what she dressed. But last season, the season before then, she was dressing like she was trying to go to the, the club, yo. She was wiling out. Um, Judge Toller, you know, she looked great, magnificent, wonderful with that purple on. I don't know what's up with Pauly and Audrey. It's like Audrey's, <laughs> Audrey was like, she cries all the time. She cries like almost, she cries like every day, all day long. And Pauly just sits there and laugh at her. What kind of shit is that? Why is he laughing at her crying? Like, I'm just like, OMG, what's really going on with this situation? They got a lot going on between them two. It seems like, you know, Audrey, she's not happy. She's not satisfied with Pauly. And like in every chance she gets, she wants to say something negative about him. And she feels like she's his prisoner. She's his slave. She's she's tired of, you know, bending over backwards for him and helping him and, you know, and everything like that. You know, she complains so much that, you know, the judge, judge, <laughs> judge Tola came and put a, put a queen sash on her head. And, you know, Paulie's rubbing her feet. Then he's saying her feet stank and shit. Like, damn, come on, Paulie. Why are you talking about your girlfriend feet stank? I don't know if Paulie and Audrey are still together, but they got some real issues going on. Like, you won't believe it. And Mama D and Ernest are way too much. Mama D fighting with Ernest in the bedroom and everything. You know, she really wasn't hitting him hard or whatever, but it's just not a good look, especially after you don't put that man in jail. He done been in there for eight years. He done been on a loving hip-hop with you. And you don't you talk about his business, his drug <laughs> his drug habits, you know, his um his erectile dysfunction and all that. I'd be like, damn, Mama D, you be going in on this man. And But he said, like, he ain't never been attracted to you. What does that mean? Like, you ain't never been attracted to her since you met her? Or is it because you, you're, you're, you're attracted to more than just, you know, her looks? Like, if it was just looks, it would have been, you would have been going a long time ago. But it seems like you're here. You're trying to ride this wave, too. She put you in jit. She put you in prison for eight years. So I don't blame you for trying to ride this train from loving hip hop to this show and whatever show that she gets on. Because damn, she put you behind bars. Your wife put you behind bars. Your girl put you behind bars. So they fighting and all that other crazy shit. Everybody's like, what's going on? What's happening? Then we got Dr. V. He goes upstairs. He does a little intervention with them or whatever. So he cools Mama D down. So she's cool, calm, collected. And then they take care of business. And this, you know, it's over with. I'm like, damn, Mama D, you don't got to do all that. Like, we know you be doing the most. But you really doing the most. <laughs> like, yo. But that's what we expect from you, I guess. So now it's time to do the next, epi the, the next you know, um. Um, activity and basically they are gonna have to pick up horse shit, put it in another uh, uh, planter's, you know, box, and then you know, and as they are putting the maneuver into the planter's box or whatever like that, they have to talk about an issue that they have with their partner, which is like, damn, like who the fuck wants to shovel shit? Like, come on, like you know, at least Audrey she likes the smell of horse maneuver, you know, she likes that, so kudos to her. But I'm like, damn. Shoveling horse shit, but Puma killed it when he goes, I don't even like to shovel snow, let alone horse shit. I feel you because we're going to get that snow and that snow's coming here. Um, I don't know if Puma still lives in New York or does he still live in Atlanta because I know he moved to Atlanta. So since we're seeing Puma and Kwame, are, is Puma not going to be on the upcoming season of Black Ink Crew New York? We'll see. And it's nice to see how Paulie and Puma get along together and they chilling, having a good time and all that other good stuff. Because, you know, Paulie, when he was here in Rhode Island, because he's from Rhode Island, you know, he used to DJ at clubs, at one club, the Red Room, he used to DJ there. And, you know, he was he was cool with everybody and it was a mixed crowd. When some nights it would be all, you know, black people, some nights it would be all white people. He was cool. Like he was, you know, mad cool, signing autographs and everything. So anyways... This is, he even was signing autographs when he first went on Jersey Shore and he came back and he was DJing a little bit. I got his autograph. You best to believe me. <laughs> so we have that situation go on. And so they, so now they have to dig horse shit. I'm just like, oh no. 
And so Kwame, her issue is insecurity. And she feels like, you know, insecurity, like, I guess she feels like um, the issue that she's bringing into the relationship from her past relationship and past issues in her life is insecurities. And yes, Kwame's very insecure, like, damn. I mean, she's real insecure. And she's like way too much. It's like, she's just really, she's all in her feelings. When someone say all in your feelings, Kwame should be the definition of all in your feelings. And so... Basically, her issue is, that, you know, she's insecure. She's having problems, you know, and she doesn't really want to have sex and stuff like that because of birth control pills. Because then why do people take birth control pills? Because they sexing. So for some reason, the birth control pills are affecting, are affecting Kwame in a certain way where she can't get up on that and do what she needs to do with her husband. And plus, you know, she and her sex drive is like down and things like that. Is it has to do with <laughs> is she attracted to Puma? That's the question. She is she still attracted to Puma because he's not like this big life of the party anymore because he he used to throw big events, big parties. You know, he was on one of the hit shows on VH1. He was in there, you know, and um he's not there anymore. He used to throw all types of events, art gallery exhibits and stuff like that. So you know, I wonder if that's the question. I wonder if just like worrying about paying the bills and trying to survive. Um, either from New York or to, you know, Atlanta actually like make her less attracted to Puma. And then, you know, we have Audrey, she's talking about, you know, she doesn't really like, you know, the way that poorly treats her and things like that you know she's and he's always breaking her down and making her feel bad and shit like that and he be out djing at the club and shit he come home and he sees me and he asks me why i look so ugly that's messed up if that's actually true that's like crazy why are you still in this relationship why are you on this show but a lot of people are saying that they don't believe that paulie and audrey are actually in a real relationship they only doing this for reality tv um not even for paulie really not for the money but just to keep your name up there and out there because, you know, if people don't see you, then, you know, if you've seen, you know, if you're not seen, if people don't hear of you, you know, it's an issue. And sometimes with this show, it can jump for you. And having a young guy like Paulie on the show is cool too as well. But, you know, we have had young guys too, but not as young as Paulie that is successful as Paulie. I can't remember. I, I don't think so. So anyways, that's, the, so she was like, that's what he says to me. And then you got Kim. She feeling a certain type of way because Ryan or uh, when, when he doesn't, you know, she doesn't know if he's attracted to her. If he, no, he's not attracted to you. I don't know why he's with you. He just leading you on. I think he just likes the friendship and that's it because he likes young tits, young ass, and he likes young women. That's what he likes. And you are neither one of them things. That's what he desired. That's what he put on the pedal stool. I think he likes the relationship as a friend. He can talk to an adult. So he gets the grown woman with you. But what he's attracted to, what he's going to spend money on, what he, he uh, fall all overs and show attention and affection with is someone that's younger. So I think, Kim, you're wasting your time. I don't know if Kim is on medication, but she just seems high as a, as a kite, man. I mean, she just, I don't know if it's, I don't think it's years of effect of, you know, drugs and alcohol abuse. Maybe that could be the question, but you know what? We'll see. And if she is on, I don't know. But like with Ernest and Mama D and their issues with drugs and shit like that, why is there alcohol all around the house and they can drink and get drunk? Especially with Dr. Ish being there and he's running a rehab facility. He should know better because in your rehab facility, people are trying to get clean and get better. And Mama D is trying to get clean and get better because she don't want to do alcohol anymore. Ernest don't want to do drugs anymore. And so nor does, you know, Kim. So why is there alcohol available? So it's like this TV show is worth more than, you know, to me, Dr. Ish is, you know, um, what he should care about the most of a doctor is not like when you have people on here, they should just have seasons with people with drug abuse and alcohol issues on the show all together. Then you take away the alcohol. You know what I mean? Because the, the thing with Chad Ocho Cinco's mom, the girl, um, I think her name was Amber and her mom and her boyfriend, them being totally strung out on the show, switching up drugs, sharing drugs and all this other stuff. Um, it's like a bad look. And then having an alcohol just sitting there, Renee recovering alcohol, like having shit just sitting there. I thought it was just bad for business, but they're going to keep doing it because like I said, it must not really be about help. So anyways, let's get back to the, 
the main event. So we have that situation go on. And so we got Kim. She don't know what's going on. And then Kim just realized that she's actually in a relationship. She, well, she is his girlfriend. Or she's his, you know, she's his girlfriend. Um, Wins girlfriend or whatever. She was like shocked. She's like, am I your girlfriend? I didn't know what's going on. Like you are too old to not know if you're in a relationship with a man. If you his side piece, his, his no piece. Like you've been married a couple of times. You've been engaged a couple of times. What is going on with Kim? You don't know if this man you spending time with, this man you chasing after, this man you want to be with. You don't know where you ex where, where the lines at with y'all. Come on, Kim. Like stop playing these games. You guys ain't you guys ain't had sex. You guys ain't going to have sex. In my opinion, that's just my opinion. Because like, how does she not know? She's been married a couple of times, and so she should like at this time and point, she should know whether she's in a relationship with when. And when is total a douchebag. He's a douche douchebag. And if I had a young daughter and she met, you know, when 21, 20, and he's trying to get with her, oh, no, the, the you know, the, the two by four is coming through. You know, the two by fours are coming out. Like, come on, like, you nasty little son of a gun. Like, you know, this is why the father's families needs to stick together and be around because if any man like when is chasing chasing your daughter around he needs to be stopped because he's just really nasty and mean even Aud um audrey was like yo he goes from like nice really sweet old guy to n pervert nasty old man and you can just see it like oh he's a type of when you walk by or pinch you and touch you and if he buy you a drink he'll be trying to put his hand up your skirt he just seemed like he's just really a douchebag but maybe he might change my mind you know, after a few episodes, but this is what I'm feeling and this is what I'm thinking about them. And so moving on from that situation, um, we have, so now they have to put this dirt and all this other stuff in, you know, and Audrey was like, you know, um, Paulie has cheated on me like a thousand times. You don't believe what you think. You don't believe in your intuition. Then leave about to call you a name so just leave then and she was like he has me on lockdown 24 7 she was like i'm always in the house come on or 24 7 you always on lockdown <laughs> he's unfaithful paulie was like i have not been unfaithful and then paulie's just saying that he hasn't cheated on her at all he might have text girls he might have talked to girls on the phone but he physically never stuck his penis in another woman's vagina did he stick it in the <laughs> let me stop so moving on from that so when his problem with Kim is her children are always around. Her children are here and there. Her children are like so important. And, you know, we don't have any quality time together because of her children. It seems like you're okay with that because you're trying to go to the club and meet you somebody else. And so then that's when she was like, well, then I don't know if I'm supposed to, you know, make time for you. I don't know if we have a relationship. Well, she don't talk like that because she sounds messed up. She sounds like really um, messed up. So she finds out she's the girl now. And <laughs> she finds out that she's the girlfriend. And then, you know, um, and I think, you know, what Mama D and Ernest is like physical abuse, physical abuse. And, you know, and just being very disrespectful. And Desiree, you know, she's worried, uh, Chris worrying about what people think. Well, he met you on a TV show. He met you this and that. And I guarantee you at one point in time when you two were together, Desiree, you wanted to make sure that you guys fit the perfect image, especially for your image and you being the more successful one. So Chris has an issue with that. And Chris' issue with, you know, Desiree is... um. You know, she's too independent. She doesn't let him be a man. She doesn't, you know, like, ask him. She feels like she has to solve everything. Well, that's well, that's something you guys should have worked out before you got married. But you're so easy. Clout chasing on TV. You all got married and had a baby. You motherfuckers don't even know each other. What a damn shame. Like, you guys be killing me. Like, the shit that y'all just get on TV and say. So then at the end of the day, there are suitcases. And, you know, Mama, Mama D's thing was verbal abuse. She feels like Ernest is verbal abusive towards her and he agrees and she's physically abusive to him too as well she's physically abusive to Ernest because we don't see that so under you know their little um planter thing or whatever it's suitcases that has manure in it that they're gonna handcuff it to their stuff and walk around the house with shit on them all day long that I'm like come on like y'all y'all come on you guys could have saved this for a worse of cast like this is what well, we'll see if they deserve this punishment they, so they gotta carry these suitcases I'm thinking about poor mama D poor Ken poor Ernest you know <laughs> the carrying around maneuver in a suitcase handcuffed to them they ain't 21 22 you know I'm like is that, that could be straining on their heart 
You know what I mean? Could be straining on their heart. And so we have that situation go on. So now, you know, um, <laughs> Ernest said he almost peed on himself and shit because of suitcase. You know, same, same thing, Puma. He's having a hard time with suitcases. Everyone is really having a hard time with the suitcases. But it seems like Paulie and, you know, Puma are having conversations. They're talking about, you know, Audrey. They're talking about their relationship. They just, you know, they're, they're actually shooting the shit, having a good time. They're talking about what they'll do with the suitcases. Paulie was like, he'll use one as, like, you know, he'll, to have sex with it. He'll put, you know, I'll use it doing sex you know one person can sit on the suitcase then I, i'll say come here honey let me get your suitcase and we can double the action i was like okay here we go so you know they, they seem like they have a cool relationship doesn't seem like chris is involved in their relationship because chris is another young guy i can understand when and um Ernest, you know because they're a lot older but it seems like chris is standoffish or Chris doesn't want to be a part of the guy's team because when the guy's, not the guy's team, but like conversate, maybe later episodes we'll see. But Chris, you know, th from the most part, he's been under, you know, Desiree following her around and being around her and everything like that, which is, you know, it's important to follow his, around, his wife around too as well. It makes her feel special, but also, you know, build a relationship with the guys, shoot the shit with the guys, talk, you know, joke and talk about things, you know, to release the energy. So we have that situation. So they got to go around carrying these cases, these suitcases. I was just like, come on, they're carrying horse shit around them. And so basically the the suitcases got stickers on it that are kind of disrespectful stickers too as well. So, you know, um, so now the doctors, they want to, um, they want to bring Audrey and Paulie upstairs and have a one-on-one -on -one with them about their relationship. You know, how they can fix it, how they can make it better. And basically, they're talking about the cheating allegations. You know, Audrey, she doesn't have any proof that they actually cheat, that Paulie actually cheated. But she believes he cheated. And he was like, well, if you think we ch if I cheated or whatever, you're going to leave me. So we ain't together. So that means that we're broken up. So you can see where Paulie is actually immature. He doesn't really know how to be in a relationship. Or he hasn't been in a serious relationship where he should know that they're not broken up because they had a goddamn show together and if they came from their houses together they came from their house in las vegas vegas together then they're actually in a relationship and then him actually just watching her cry and just laughing and not consoling her but he feels like damn she cries all day long but there's a reason why she's crying there's some problems pay for some counseling you got the money you got the ducats baby you got it and she's supposed to be your girl i don't know so we have that situation going on we got wider Wyatt or when talking about you know you know your relationship to uh, to Audrey your relation your relationship with Paulie and you you know it's a lot of looks involved you know what I'm saying I was like damn he is just he just way too much and so we have that situation so it's just like damn so I guess they're gonna try to Paulie needs to be more comforting to Audrey audrey and he needs to you know make her feel like she's special she's his girlfriend like he cares what she thinks and not just throw everything under the bus but you know someone accusing you cheating him every day or always accusing you of cheating if you haven't cheated it's really you know disaster because it's not a it's not sexy it's not attractive it makes you not want to be around her because being insecure it's not an attractive quality confidence is an attractive quality so now they go into the field they plan this game and shit like that they got to run through the field pick out all their issues that the pro they have and their partner has and then go to the finish line they all did a shitty job you know Ernest did a good job by going back to help mama d because he finished before her so he went back to help her after it was suggested to him but kwame and puma actually did a good job they went they walked through the finish line together and they and they were helping each other out. I don't know why the doctors didn't, you know, say anything about that because they actually did the best job and they did it together and they didn't bring it up. I don't know why. So we have that situation. So basically, you know, we're going to we're going to see Dr. Tola. I mean, I call her Dr. Tola cuz she's a doctor when it comes to these people, but she's actually, you know, the judge. And so Chris and, you know, Denise, she doesn't feel validated she don't get validation she needs to feel special she want chris you know to hug her you know pinch her kiss her talk to her do something make me feel like you want me do what you did to me on the show so you can get in my bed you know that's what she wants like you know just because i put the ring on it and you in my house i need some affection baby <laughs> but he's like yo you so independent i don't even know if i could be a man around you like he f <laughs> so we have that situation because each couple is supposed to talk about one of their issues 
you know, together. Pa Pauly and Audrey, their issue is just really just everything. Fake, the lie. Audrey's saying that Pauly is fake. He's a liar. You know, he doesn't want people to know the real him because, you know, that he might have a fan in the room or people are looking up to him or he might not have any fans in the room and then they get a bad image of him. So basically, she's calling Paulie out, just saying that you ain't this great person. You're not this innocent person that you portray like you this nice, happy, lucky go guy that you're actually a mean boy. That's what she's saying. Mm mm mm. And then we got we back to Kwame and you know Puma with the affectionate situation and he kept digging and she kept crying. I was like, you know, um, Kwame, don't qu cry on TV no more. It's not a good look. So we have that situation go on, and it's just like, yo, it's not really that serious. Like, you know, it's not really that entertaining. Let's get some. Hopefully, next episode is entertaining because you know, I'm like, come on. Last season, the season four last, and the season four last was off the meters. But I guess these these people are a lot more reserved. So we have that situation go on. Um, Judge Tola, she comes out. Ernest throw up. He has mucus in his throat, and his he sees blood too as well. And he's been trying to get it up, but he wasn't able to. So the medic comes, you know. And at least Mama D was right there by his side, and she, you know, she was with him too as well. So that's cool with that situation. And so this is when you know Judge Tola, she just gives her opinion on them. Like, damn, I don't know what's going on with you and when Kim, but damn, your relationship is like brother and sister. Could we see some more? Then she gives you know Audrey the crown to wear and. Paulie D supposed to kiss her ass all day and, and rub her feet and do all that other good stuff. And then we have Denise and um, Chris. What are they supposed to do? Denise and Chris, they're supposed to be the light of each other, light each other up, be the light of each other's life. I don't know what they're supposed to do. <laughs> and Puma needs to back up. And, you know, once he wins the argument, he proves his point. He doesn't need to badger um, Kwame. So basically, that's it, really. That's a, but Dr. Doctor Ish, she called Paulie a pussy. She called him a bitch or a pussy. She called him one of them. What did she, I, she called him, I think she called him a pussy. She called him an, a, a, a name that was very disrespectful. Paulie was like, I'm going to accept it. And I know Audrey was like, if I would have said that to you, you would have been down my throat. So peace, I'm out. One love to my peeps and my peoples.